On count one of involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count two of involuntary manslaughter in regards to Tate Muir, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count three as to involuntary manslaughter regarding Hannah, Hannah St. Juliana, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. And in count four of involuntary manslaughter against Justin Schilling, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. A resounding, stunning success for prosecutors in 10 hours and 48 minutes of deliberations. Two questions asked by the jurors. One was a legal question. One was a factual question. Came back guilty on all four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumbly now faces up to 15 years in state prison based on that conviction. You could tell the defense was completely stunned. Prosecutors were not only successful in scoring across the board 100% convictions, but on what is is by most estimations a novel and unique theory holding the parents responsible for the actions of one of their children. Whether you agree with that or you don't disagree with it, the bottom line is this jury has spoken and the only other entity that's going to have any other say over that will be the appellate courts down the road to see whether or not they will give their imprimatur to this kind of conviction. And on that note, Bob, let's just talk appeals real quickly. Appeals are not a shot at a second trial. Trial. They are if there was error that was made either in the introduction of evidence, maybe in the jury charge. So let's let's presume for the sake of argument the judge charged the jury correctly. They didn't put any evidence that was overly prejudicial, right? Because sometimes the court will say there was overwhelming evidence that even if there was some mistake that was made, uh, they didn't think it was substantially affected. Uh, this case is going to come down to, in my opinion, a legal argument as to whether or not the involuntary manslaughter can apply to parents. I think, even though I'm not a big fan of this theory, I think that's going to stick with the appellate courts. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the law is um, parental neutral, if, if I can say that. It doesn't, it, it's not targeting parents, it's not targeting the situation, it's a law that targets conduct. And these individuals were not, con or the mother was not convicted vicariously, which means that, you know, if an agent of yours uh, does something, you know, the principal, the person in control of that agent is responsible. That didn't happen here. She was convicted on her own individual acts. And what were those? She knew there was a gun. She knew her child had access to it. She knew there were issues with the child. She knew there were issues that day with the child. Mm -hmm. And there was no effort to secure or locate the gun. And what happens right after the shooting? As, as Matt said before, which was a, a great point, you know, where is the gun? Not is our son safe? Right. You know, where is the gun? Suggesting that even though she didn't think it at the time, objectively reasonable standard is she knew her child was capable of that. Well, you know, part of what you're saying is interesting is that you're talking a lot about her and her and her. And of course, she made a decision to take the witness stand, which is always a very dramatic and important decision. Uh, I would suggest that they did that basically feeling that they needed to explain to the jury their actions or lack thereof.